VUG and SCHG. Two great growth ETFs next to QQQ, among the biggest in the market, and today we're going to compare them based on five different aspects. Strategy, fees, diversification, holdings, and performance. John Thomas asked me to do this video in a commentary some weeks ago, so if you have some wish for future videos, you can comment down below, and if there is enough interest from the community, I will be glad to make a video for you. And by the way, talking about interest, if you think that I'm giving you some value with this video, please be nice and drop a beautiful like to help me out growing my channel. My name is Rick, welcome to my investing channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And now let's go straight to the first aspect, which is the strategy. VUG, the Vanguard Growth Index Fund ETF, is a market cap weighted ETF, namely the weight of the companies inside it depends on the market capitalization. VUG tracks the CRSP US Large Cap Growth Index, which selects the major growth stocks listed in the US stock market. Inside this beautiful growth pot, you'll find 200 large cap stocks classified as growth and listed on any US exchanges. So how does this ETF identify companies with growth characteristics? Easy. It selects companies with the highest price to book ratios and higher forecasted growth. SHG, on the other hand, tracks the return of the Dow Jones US Large Cap Growth Total Stock Market Index. The index includes the large cap growth portion of the Dow Jones Total Stock Market, looking for the 250 best and biggest growth companies within the index. To classify a stock as growth, the index uses six measures two projected, two current, and two historical measures. Projected price to earning ratio, PE, projected earning growth, based on expected three to five year annual increase, price to book ratio, dividend yield, trailing revenue growth, and trailing earning growth. Now, both VUG and SAG are market cap weighted and are focused on growth. They follow similar strategies in selecting ETFs, but I slightly prefer SAG. For this reason, I'm gonna give here seven points to VUG and eight points to SAG. Let's move on now to the expense ratio. If we look at a portfolio turnover, namely how much of the average value of the portfolio is sold and bought every year, VUG has a portfolio turnover of 5% and SCHG 4%. So VUG has a little bit more work for the turnover to cover expenses for. Nevertheless, the two ETFs both offer themselves for a minimal expense ratio of 0.04%. Now, this expense ratio is so cheap that if you invest in ETFs from Europe, you don't get such a cheap expense ratio even if you invest in the S&P 500. So, my dear friends from the US, value what you have when you have it. So, after we cleared out that ETFs in America rock and they are the best of the best, let's go to the grade. I'm going to give 9 points to both ETFs because they're as cheap as they can get. And I'm bringing now VUG to 16 points and SHG to 17 points. Point number 3 is diversification the magic word that some people idolize and some people call stupidity. I don't know about you, but I don't have the arrogance to say I don't need to diversify. I'm just a stupid investor that looks like managing all videos. So when Buffett says that diversification is protection against ignorance, well, I say I am an ignorant. Now, VUG and SHG are really similar ETFs. Both are focused on the growth sector and both are heavy, heavy and heavier in information technology, which is the strongest sector that was and always will be, at least until the next crash. SCHG is a bit more diversified than VUG with 250 holdings, which is actually a really sweet number for an ETF. And by checking the overlap through ETF Research Center, we see that there is an 83% overlap by weight between the two ETFs. So you need to know that if you buy both, you're not really netting value than buying just one. My suggestion is after you've watched this video, just choose one and stick with it. While the overlap in weight is extremely high because the main holdings are heavy and can be found in both ETFs, the overlap in the number of holdings is around 60% by both ETFs. What's interesting is the shift in the sectors covered in the two ETFs. For this, I prepared this table that shows you which sectors have an overweight in VUG compared to SHG and vice versa. You can see VUG is strongly focused on information technology with 56.2% against 46.08% of SHG. VUG has a strong focus on technology and consumer discretionary, which together amount to around 65% of the total weight. SHG instead reduces the overweight a little bit, giving a difference to all the other sectors and in particular bringing healthcare and communications to the same level as consumer discretionary. Both because of the higher number of holdings and because I like the more uniform distribution of the sectors compared to VUG, I believe that SAG does a better job here. So I'm going to give here 6 points to VUG and 7 points to SAG, bringing VUG to 22 and SAG to 24 points. 
Aspect number five are the holdings. Obviously, since both ETFs focus on the growth sector, and as we've seen, they have a lot of overlap, you can imagine that the top 10 holdings are gonna be really similar. And in fact, the only difference is that VUG has Visa and SAG Broadcom. The total weight of the top 10 holdings is extremely similar in both, with 56% comma something, and honestly, there is not much to say here. The sector weight is different as we've seen before, but when it comes to companies like the top 10 that actually make a dent on the ETF performance, there is not such a great difference. I do like the fact that SHG includes Broadcom in the top 10. And considering also that SHG has 250 holdings against 199 of VUG, I'm gonna give here seven points to VUG and eight points to SHG, bringing VUG to 29 total points and SHG to 32. Now let's jump now to the last and for most of you, probably the most interesting aspect, which is the performance. I know, past performance is not a guarantee of future results, but it's nice to know if we are buying a past loser or not, right? Now it's gonna be easy today because sometimes we have ETFs that perform better in the last year, worse in the last five, then again better in the last 10, like a roller coaster, but not today. Both ETFs performed in the same way in the short term and in the long term because of the fact that they both focus on the growth sector with a strong overlap. But while I was analyzing the two ETFs, I've noticed something really interesting. So hear me out. Although VUG was the one with the strongest overweight in information technology, which has been the strongest sector in the last 13, 14 years, SEHG managed to perform better on the short and on the long term. Year to date, SEHG delivered 7.08% return against 5.94% of VUG. In the last five years, SEHG delivered 119.8% or 17 per year against 107.69% or 15.7% per year for VUG. In the last 10 years, again, SHG delivered a better return with 320.64% or 15.5% per year against 286.91% or 14.5% per year for VUG. If you invested $100,000 in SHG 10 years ago, you now have $420,000. Well, VUG would have given you only 387,000. Now, truth be told, they're both great numbers for an ETF, considering that in the same time frame, the S&P 500 would have only returned to you $267,000. Obviously, I want to remind you that past performance is never a guarantee of future results. Around a month ago, I published a video about the near future of the stock markets and the technology sector. In this video that you can find here and in the description below, I try to analyze what I believe have been the moving factors of the stock markets and the growth sector in the past years. What has to happen for the market to keep growing at this pace and why I believe we're not gonna see the same growth this year that we've seen in the last 12 months. Now, all that said, SHG looks like a stronger choice when it comes to past performance, and for this reason I'm gonna give 8 points to VUG and 9 points to SHG, making SHG the winner with 41 points against 37 of VUG. But now there is an important point. Do I believe that the growth sector will still be predominant in the stock market? The short answer is yes, in the long term. In the long term I feel quite confident it will. What I don't know is how the growth market is gonna develop in the next one, two years, because in the last year and a half, it grew at a pace that is almost unbelievable. Everything is reasonable, of course. AI came out of the gate storming and companies like Nvidia saw their profits actually grow tenfold within a couple of years. But still, history taught us that after one or two years of exceptional growth, there is always a good probability of a price stagnation for a sector or sometimes even a drop. Still, Hopefully I'm wrong. Actually, I hope I am because my personal portfolio is strongly on the growth side. So I honestly hope that I'm dead wrong and that this year, next year, the technology sector is gonna deliver again 40% and then 40% and then some. And since I'm not a financial advisor, I'm likely wrong with whatever I say. And that's why you should never listen to me, but still you should subscribe to the channel to talk finance with me, with my community, and also to see how my investing journey goes. Because if it doesn't go well, you can say that the twin of Manu Ginobili not only is not a good basketball player, but is also terrible at finance. And if it does go well, well, hopefully you can learn a lesson from my many mistakes. So, what's left to say? I wanna know what you invest in and what you believe in. So let us all know in the comment section below what you think about VUG and what you think about SHG. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you all for watching, guys. I wish you a great day. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.